Well, Alicia, what are you doing today? We are making, vel we're working with Velvet HTV. What so is that? So velvet heat transfer vinyl. Right. Y'all, when I first saw this, I saw a couple different people using it on the interwebs. Yeah. And I was like, excuse me, what? Like, right. I have to try it. I have to get my hands on it. And so we did. We got our hands on some. Um, the brand is Craftables. But basically, I'm going to be showing y'all how to do, like, the different cut settings, the different heat settings, because it is different from regular yeah. HTV. Um, but it feels so good. Like, you know, sometimes if you do HTV on something, depending on the brand, it can feel like you made it. Yeah. I feel like this Velvet HTV, it looks store-bought. And that's really? what I love so much about it. Yeah. Wow. So it's pretty amazing. And I'm looking over there and realizing I didn't even bring the sample in that I made, which oh, that's I fun. probably should. But, you know, we're going so to have a final product today. Yeah, so I'm going to be are. showing you all from start to finish how to do it. Yeah, so, you are. It's going to be very incredible. Very exciting stuff. Yes. Uh, some people didn't even know that there was such a thing as Velvet HTV. Welcome to the party. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Because I didn't either. And I whenever I saw it I was like there's no way that's heat transfer vinyl yeah. and it's not it's not vinyl but okay. it's I, I guess they're calling it vinyl because the how back hard, of it how hard was it to get the settings um it it's you know so you, you got, got you a got little, a little hacky hack? yeah you got to do a little finagling okay but it's nothing nothing crazy nothing we can't do yeah it's yeah awesome. so you y'all know we like to kind of move our cut settings around and stuff like that yes. so that's what we're gonna do today yes now I'm gonna make sure so anyways I have a few different things here. You don't need a lot of extra supplies for this project, um, but I did order this blanket and I tried to find um, something that was like, I don't know, decorative. I would use this more as a decorative blanket, but honestly, this velvet is so nice that you cannot even tell, like you could use it on an everyday blanket if you wanted to, but I just think it's so pretty. I, I just want to display it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you're going to need a blanket. And I want to say, let's see, this blanket is 70% polyester, um, but I don't think it matters because you can apply this heat, if you can apply heat transfer vinyl to it, you can apply this to it. So um, this one's really super soft. If you're not a polyester person, don't purchase the blanket that's in the links for you. Um, it does have that polyester feel, which I personally like, but I know a lot of people do not like how polyester feels. Gotcha. Um, you could totally do like cotton or something like that. Um, so this is the Velvet HTV you're going to need. And so it's very interesting. Can you all see? It's, it's thick. It has a carrier sheet built in like heat transfer vinyl wood. And then it's still kind of got this like sheen, like shiny on the back. Y'all, this is like real velvet. I mean, or like, I guess they call it crushed velvet, um, but it feels like real velvet. It's so, it's so, so nice. And so I picked this color, but there's other color options. And then I have a Teflon sheet here. I've got a Cricut. This is a very large Cricut heat press mat because we are going to be using our big mama Cricut heat press. I never use this heat press because I, y'all know I'm a mini press, ride or die girl, but I really like this size for this project because it covers the entire design that we're doing today. So I really like that it covers everything and that I don't have to manually go in with like a mini press and do it. So the bigger press that you have, the better I think it's going to work depending on your design. Now, if you do small, a smaller design, it won't matter as much, um, but I think this is going to be your best bets. And then I have a brayer. I've got some masking tape. That's optional in case your mat is not super sticky. Um, scissors. I have a measuring tape. And then I've got a strong grip mat. Now you could use like a newer standard grip mat if that's all you have on hand. But you want to make sure that you've got something that's really going to hold on to the vinyl because this is thick. And so whenever I'm using thicker materials, I try to use a strong grip or a new standard grip mat. So, and then you're gonna need a couple different fonts. We're using the split monogram font and the fellowship font. And I will show you all. I downloaded them already, but where's my mouse? Oh, here it is. Um, I downloaded them already, but I can show you all where to find them on the website. Love it. So let's go ahead and get logged in there. Links. Don't so worry. this is one of the fonts that we're going to be using today. And this is one of our newer fonts. So every month we release new fonts, which is amazing. Um, if you're a member, you get access to all of those fonts and you get commercial use of them as well, which is really nice. 
And so if you wanted to sell velvet blankets with these beautiful monograms on them, you could totally do it. And so you're just going to download that. It'll pop into a zip folder and then you can double click on the font and install the font. So we've already got it technically. Um, and then I'm just going to go back and you can always search for your, um, like the font style that you want over here. Like if you wanted to do a fancy font, um, we even have a monogram category, which is really nice because that's what we're needing. So you can just select monogram and all of these fonts are going to pop up and you can see we've got two pages full of monogram fonts, which is amazing for all of our monogram peeps. And so we're going to be using this split monogram. And again, you're just going to click the little download button, double click your zip folder, double click the item in the folder, and then you're going to install your font. Okay. And then we're going to go back to design space. And we're just going to reload Design Space. Go View and Reload. And then our fonts will be in Design Space. Now, can you Thank use you. this on any fabric? Um, the Velvet HTV? Yeah. I would say probably yes. Okay. I would say probably now, yes. Now, from your research, have you noticed any other brands that uh, offer Velvet heat transfer vinyl? We're having some friends ask. Um, and if you can find some, let me know. <laughs> I could not find um, any that looked even close yeah. to the quality, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I did this project quite a while ago, so maybe it got the word got around and maybe I missed it. Um, but this is like really good quality. I'm going to recommend this brand. I just think that it's good. I know it works. It's foolproof. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Before we get started, um, I went ahead and downloaded the fonts. And I'm going to go ahead and start designing what we want. So before we, before we go in and design it, though, I want to make sure that I'm making, I'm going to like basically put a little template. And y'all know we like to kind of have like some kind of guide for how big everything needs to be. And so with the blanket, we're not doing the whole blanket, obviously, right? Um, but you do want to kind of decide where you want to put your design. And so I'm thinking, I'm thinking... If I have this blanket, and we may have to go to camera one so y'all can see what I'm doing here. If you wanted this blanket to like hang over like the ledge of a couch, for example, you want to think about how it's folded and where you want your monogram to be. So if this, if my arm was the leg of the couch or like the arm of the couch, and I want it to show right here, this is the space that I want to work in when I'm in design space. So this is, I need to measure how big this is and make sure my design fits within the parameters. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, now, if you wanted to fold it differently, fold it how you think it's going to be displayed and then measure the area that it's going to be showing up in. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's measure this. Where's my little thingy? Okay. So I'm not going to include the fringes. I'm just going to include all of this part. And so... Let's see here. We've got about, I'm not going to go all the way to the end because I don't need it to be, I don't want it to fill up this whole right. area. You want it to look like it was like natural. Right. So I'm thinking like nine by 10. Now, this vinyl is not 12 by 12. I'll say that. 12 by 10 is what I read on the On the website. Yeah. yeah. So these are 12 by 10. So you technically could not even get bigger than that. Now, if you were feeling risky and you wanted to butt two pieces, I'm not even going to get into that, but I was going to say, if you wanted to make it really big, you could butt two pieces of it up together, but we're not going to do that today. So you want to make sure that your design parameters are within the 12 by 10, which ours are. We're going to do nine by 10. So let's go back into design space. And I am going to just click a shape and we're just going to pull in a basic shape. So this is my favorite way to kind of lay out my designs and make sure that it fits proportionally. You can unlock your shape and then our width is going to be nine and our height is going to be 10. Okay. And then I'm going to change the color of this to the color of our blanket. Love it. So this is our design. This is my little guide, and what we need to do next is pull in our first design element. So that's going to be your monogram, because the monogram is the biggest element. It's going to take up most of the space. So 
select the text box right here and we're going to do an R. I'm going to do Renner, which is my daughter's babysitter's new Aww. married name. <laughs> so I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to come up to my fonts. And if you're ever looking for a font and it's on Cricut, if I try to search in monogram right here, it's going to give me whatever Cricut is offering. Yeah. I don't want that. So make sure you select system fonts and it's going to pull up all of your downloaded monogram fonts. Does that make sense? Um, the blanket color is beautiful, Tina. So, okay, we're just going to, oh, I need to search it. Let's see, monogram. Okay, and then you can see all of these different ones that we've used in the past. And we're going to be using the split monogram. And holy moly, that's big. Let's right. Zoom out. Okay, and then we're just going to shrink it down so that it fits within our parameters. Let me zoom back in so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay, and you can stretch it to fill that area. That way you know how big it's going to be. Okay, beautiful, right? Yeah. Now, the next thing that we need to do is add in our text that's going to go through the middle. So I'm going to do Renner, and it's still in my monogram font. So I'm going to hit Command A. That's going to select everything in our text box. And then we can type in our other font name, which is Fellowship. Okay, I love this font. I think it's so cute. Um, now, I will recommend that you do all caps here. I just think it looks better. It kind of fills in the space because you can see now, like, if it was small, there's going to be big gaps. And so what I like to do is use all caps. You could also use a, um, like, a script, but I would make sure that you didn't do anything too dainty because it's not going to cut well. So you want to make sure that you're not doing anything super detailed um, when you're cutting this vinyl. I, I don't even like to call it vinyl. When you're cutting this velvet. Um, it does. It, I mean, it really is just like adhesive back velvet, right? It literally is. Like people's like, wait, it looks just like velvet. No, it, it's velvet. It's velvet. With a, with a heat activated yeah. backer. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. It, it literally is velvet. So, but you don't want to do anything super intricate just because... You don't want to mess up your design. So we have lots of like beautiful floral monograms on our website that you're going to probably come across when you're looking at monograms. I don't really recommend those unless you're planning to make a bigger design. Um, and these, this uh, velvet does come in a roll. So if you wanted to do like a really long, like a full last name and did like maybe some florals on that or something you could, but I just wouldn't recommend if you're going to do something this small on this scale, I would not do anything super intricate. Um, unless you kind of played with the cut settings and stuff like that on your own and feel free feel free to do that if you're feeling you know brave and then the last thing I want to do and this is a design preference um, just for me I like to add a little bit of space in between my letters so I'm just going to add like a 0.5 of space maybe even like a 0.8 yes do you see how that makes, like, elevates it a little bit? Is yeah. it just me? No, a little <laughs> I bit. always feel like space in between my letters elevates my design. Uh, maybe I'm just crazy. It just crazy. makes it stand out more. It like, does. See it it kind of cleans more. it up a little bit. You can read it better. Right. Increases readability. Now, I love that you were kind of just, for anyone here that is newer to using our monogram fonts, this is a really simple way to see how you can customize it. Like, it's really easy to work with our monograms. Yes. Um, if you want to look at other monograms, sometimes you'll download two or three uh -huh. fonts to use a monogram font, um, and you would see the left, middle, and right. Um, right. So just know that. And we have training for it if you all need it. Yes, and we've got so many good monogram fonts. Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is make sure everything is aligned. So I'm going to go to my Layers panel. I'm going to select my R. Hold the shift key down and select Renner. And then I'm going to align and center horizontally. Now, you can see right away that this is kind of not centered. Um, it could just be the font. Sometimes if they have, if it's like a sans serif font, sometimes these little lines will throw off the alignment. Um, so I'm just going to bump it back into where I think that it looks more centered. So you don't always have to trust your align tool. Most of the time it's right, but if it looks off, adjust it. Yeah. Um, and it, it did look a little bit off. So I'm pulling it in. And then 
I saw someone ask about the lines on the end. We, it sh they should cut fine, but yes, like, I don't want to be doing a font that has lots of thin, skinny lines, but I think if we have a few here and there, we should be fine. We'll cross our fingers, right? Yeah. <laughs> so after you get it lined up exactly how you want it, I'm going to select both of these again in the layers panel, and we're just going to attach them. And so this is going to keep everything exactly where it is. If I were to group these together, it would not do that. It would put my renter somewhere on my cutting mat and it would put my R somewhere on my cutting mat. Right. But since I've attached them, they're going to stay where I want them to stay. And so that's it. That's all for the design no process. Way. Yeah. So easy. I think that so took us easy. like 10 minutes maybe. Yeah. And so um, what you just need to do now is hide your little square. We're going to go to make it. And since we're using a heat transfer vinyl, we are going to be cutting this from the back. So that means that we're going to be putting the carrier sheet face down onto the sticky part of the mat. So we're cutting it from the back, which means that we need to mirror our image. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever cutting heat transfer vinyl and you're putting the carrier sheet down onto the mat, you need to mirror your image. And so we will select continue. And then I am going to be cutting this on denim bonded. Who has used that cut setting here before? <laughs> Ooh, not me. <laughs> me neither before this. Maybe I used it when I've actually cut denim. Have you cut denim before? Yeah, but are you using the rotary blade? No. What? No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So um, I'm going to be using denim bonded, okay? And so I've seen this done a couple different ways just whenever using thicker materials. Like a lot of times people will use um, settings like denim bonded with more pressure to really cut through it. But the denim bonded cut setting has a lot of pressure on its own. So I don't need to add more pressure. I will say that if you are cutting with an older machine or it, it doesn't even necessarily need to be older. It could just be your machine needs a little bit more pressure or may even need a little bit less pressure, you can always adjust your pressure right here in this drop down menu. Now I've tested it a couple times and I actually have it right here so you guys could see. Um, I did test it using more pressure and you can see it almost cut through my carrier sheet. So I think a lot of you all will probably run into the issue of, you're like, I wanna make sure it cuts all the way through. So let me add more pressure. Be very careful and make sure you're doing a test cut first because I don't want you all, to, first of all, to waste the spinal, it's a little pricey. Um, so get you a piece and use it as your test sheet and make sure to get your cut settings right before you go willy nilly cutting your design because it is gonna vary from machine to machine. It's gonna be similar, but it's gonna be a little bit different. And so I felt more happy to use my default cut setting. So I'm just gonna use default pressure on the denim bonded cut setting. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, Betty, we're using a Velvet HGV that is linked below for you guys. So I've got default pressure here. All I need is a fine point blade. That blew my mind too, I promise. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? We don't need a rotary blade for this, which is really nice because you don't have to buy, you know, the adaptive tools and all that. And so what I'm gonna do now is move all this stuff out of the way. Um, okay, so here's our velvet. The carrier sheet is on the top. That means that I'm going to flip it over. The carrier sheet goes on the bottom, okay? And we're gonna be cutting it from the back. I'm gonna line this up to the top left of my mat. And then you can take a burnishing tool or a brayer. I personally like a brayer when I'm using fabrics like velvet or if I'm using like fabric with heat and bond on the back of it, a brayer really allows me to lay everything down smoothly, okay? And then we are just gonna run this through as the Cricut. Okay, good deal. Yes, Annette, it will need to be mirrored before you go to cut it, that is correct. I really love that we're only using the fine point blade for this because I feel like a lot of times if we're doing any kind of like crazy new material, it always requires all of this like new product and stuff, but it's really nice because you can experiment with this and you don't really need anything new. Like if you've already got a heat source um, and you've already got your Cricut, like yeah. you're good to go. 
honestly, you've probably already got a blanket laying around somewhere if I had to guess. <laughs> I think For that sure. This, I really think that this velvet would look good, and I have not tried it on satin, so if you guys try Ooh. it on satin, this would be gorgeous on a bridal robe. Yeah. Like, or bridesmaid robes. I feel like that would be so, so pretty. And so, you all can see, go, let's go to the share screen. It's cutting one of three passes. So whenever you cut the denim bonded, it does cut more than one pass. And so that allows it to cut all the way through while only having to use that fine point blade. I love that. Yes. Love it. Okay, Look it's cutting right now. And so I don't know what pass it's on on these, but on my smaller letters, it scares me every time. It did it to yeah. me the first time. <gasps> dun, 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 dun. <gasps> it makes me dun, so dun. nervous. So I kind of babysit it because I don't want it to mess up my cut. Yeah, for sure. And whenever something is doing multiple cuts, especially if there's fine lines, you have to be very careful. Yes. But if anything sure. messes up, we can always be cut. Okay. While it's cutting, please don't mess up. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we're going to turn our Cricut press on. Okay. Let me turn it this way so it's not upside down. Okay. Can y'all see that? Yep. Okay. We're gonna push the power button. We are gonna be setting it on 310. So it technically needs to be between 300 and 315. 310 is like my happy medium and it worked really well for me. So we're going to adjust this to 310. And then for, we're gonna be actually pressing it twice. So the first one you're gonna press for 10 seconds and then we apply a Teflon sheet and we press it for 15 more seconds. It sounds crazy, but I'm just following the rules, everybody. Love it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit to so the you're side. You're gonna hit it how many times? Twice. Twice. Yes. That's not too bad. Um, Alicia, are you about, are you sweating bullets over yes. what is happening here? With yes. Your velvet? Show us what's happening here on this beautiful lab training. Okay, so I can already, these ends, and you guys warned, you warned me, that my ends on the other one were fine, um, but these did not cut as well, and I, ha I have a resolution. Okay, so okay. We'll, we'll fix it, don't worry. Um, but it did not, it cut them, but like it cut them away. So like right. our ends basically don't exist anymore. Um, everything else turned out really good. So I'm actually gonna use the R still. Oh. Um, but what I'm gonna do, let's go back into design space before I weed anything. Let's just go back into design space and troubleshoot this very quickly. So you could just change the font if you wanted to, but I'm thinking I'm gonna add a very small offset and wow. thicken it up. Let's see what it looks like. Well, we're gonna have to play. So I'm gonna detach everything and I'm just gonna select Renner over here in my layers panel and let's go to offset. Now 0.25 is way too big. I'm thinking like 0.05. If that. Okay, not not too shabby. Let's see here. Mm. Let's hide the original renter. Okay, did are y'all seeing what Alicia's doing? She added an offset mm -hmm. to then remove the regular font mm -hmm. and to pretty much thicken up her font. She created her own font with being able to do this and it automatically changes the color yes. which is so good because then when she presses make it she doesn't have to worry about right. removing anything it's on its own color right and so we don't even work because we're not going to be recutting that r yeah um and i wow. didn't need to resize or anything and wow. so just adjust the offset until you get to a point where you feel like it's thick enough and i feel like the ends here are thick enough now and so i think that's going to work for me Love it. And so really, I'm just gonna hide this R. All we need to cut out is this. And I am going to just go to make it. And I'm wondering if I have, mm, we won't risk it. Okay. <laughs> We're not risking it today. We're not gonna risk it. it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this vinyl. Now be careful, cause this carrier sheet is attached, but like not, um, it comes off of the vinyl easily. Okay, and this is a thick, or a strong, strong grip mat, you guys. It does not play. I saw a couple of people last week, they were like, I do the go with gravity method and I snap my mat in half. Oh my gosh, please I've be always careful. thought I couldn't do that, but this mat makes me feel like 
I, full happen. transparency, everyone watching, I do not support the mat that she's using. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strong. I probably made a bad decision. Yeah, I am not a, I'm not a map. I'm, I'm not that matte guy. Like, I've seen other ones and whatnot, but that one's... Have you used this brand in standard grip before? Mm, I, I'm sure I have. I'm just not a fan. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just very sticky. Like, I don't even know what you would even really use. Heather it. says there's not enough space on the bottom for it to recut. We're just recutting the, um, the name, and there is room at the bottom if we wanted to recut from that sheet. We could also use another sheet. I'm probably just going to use another sheet because we don't want to mess it up again. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? You don't want to have to uh, put it in and out. Chrissy knows me. Chrissy knows Nikapa is my mat. Nikapa is my mat too. Nikapa is my face. Now, Alicia, you what? have bragged on these mats before. The Karagi? Yeah. Oh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a different day. I have a different opinion. Right? Um, I have only, I do like it if I really need a good, strong grip mat though. Now, are you a fan of those black mats? Um, I used to be, but Nikapa is my favorite. Yeah, Nikapa is really cool. Yeah. Um, we actually, me and Courtney had talked about, we had this like idea to do a whole line of physical products for you guys. And obviously, um, we aren't doing that as of yet, but one of the ideas was to offer like a really great quality mat. But did you all ever think about how hard it is to ship these mats? I I know. It's hard. Because, like, it's not going to fit in your mailbox. Yeah. You know? So, anyway, it's very expensive to ship mats. So, just thank everyone who does sell mats. Yes. Thank um, you, Nikapa. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, make sure to mirror it whenever you go to make it. We're going to select continue, and we are going to cut this on denim bonded. I'm going to do, uh, y'all, this is why I said make sure to test it before you go. Because before the live, whenever I was just, I was like, I'm just going to test again before we start. The default pressure was fine, but like I used default pressure here and look, it's tried to cut all the way through. It did wow. cut all the way through in a lot of places. So Which that's okay. It it's is not the worst. It's not the worst thing that could happen, right. but I really like my carrier sheet to hold everything in place. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want it to cut all the way through. So on this one, I'm gonna do denim bonded and I'm gonna do less pressure. Wow. Just to wow. make sure it doesn't cut through because those little letters are not going to be as easy to line up as mm -hmm. the big R. Mm -hmm. So hit done there and then we're going to do a less pressure. Y'all, okay. let's give uh, Alicia and the Cricket some love in the comments. Go ahead and drop them some inspiration or motivation um, as they're about to cut again. Pray for me. Pray I'm very me. excited to see you weed this velvet. I don't know about everyone watching, but I'm very intrigued to see the process of the weeding. Um, yeah. I think the applying is fine. I think the cutting will be fine. But the weeding, I'm very excited to watch. You're more curious. I'm more now. curious. Who else is curious about the weeding? Let us know. Let us know. Yes. So good. Okay, I'm gonna weed this as best as I can. You, as I was showing y'all, it's kind of detached from the carrier sheet. I'm gonna try to keep the carrier sheet intact as well as I can. Okay. You so, got this, Alicia, Lindsay says. <laughs> thank you, Lindsay. I'm actually going to trim off this excess because we don't want any extra annoyance. And I can save this little piece and use it for something later yeah. down the road. That is I'm watching so you, Cricket. I'm watching him. Come on, Cricket. Come on. Come through for us. So awesome. So you're just going to weed this as you normally would, um, like HTV. You're going to weed out everything that you do not want. Yeah. And just be very cognizant. If your carrier sheet did get cut a little bit, be very careful. Right, 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 right. And so there's a little bit of, like, leftover um, velvet. Okay, you're like, this is a breeze to yeah. weed. Oh, my gosh. It weeds so good. And it's probably because it cut all the way through the carrier <laughs> sheet, but um, you can see yeah. it's still semi-intact, which is really nice for us. Yeah. So I'm just going to awesome. leave that there. I'm actually going to pop this out because it's kind of detached. And we are going to set that to the side. <gasps> Y'all, it was fine. Your, oh. Our prayers have been answered. Well, you haven't weeded it yet. You're not out of the woodwork. I don't know. I feel good about it. You feel good about it? I got some good energy. Okay, I have an idea for you. Okay. And tell me what... Tell me what, okay, I'm going to give you the idea and tell me if you've already thought about it. Okay. After you weed it and like cut it, like with your X-Acto knife, 
could you place those letters right there onto the like carrier sheet to carrier sheet, and then he press it like just like it was all together? Well, let's do it. Wouldn't yeah, that I be think cool? you could. I think you could totally do that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you do it either way. Yeah. Like press the R down, then the name letters, or you could like try to. Wait. So you want me to put these letters onto here? I want you to cut out that carrier sheet like real close to letters, and then after you weed it, place those letter and the carrier sheet inside of the R before you press it, so it can press all together. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about it. I don't know. <laughs> Let me just weed oh, it first. I mean, so one fun. step at a time, everybody. One so step fun. at a time. It almost cut all the way through the carrier sheet on here too. With Ooh, less pressure. Child. Ooh. Nervous. But look, it didn't, so Yay. praise this mat. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'm gonna use it for other reasons, but I don't know. I'm not sure about it. Yeah. Okay, I feel better. Yeah, you do. I feel, well, <laughs> what I was gonna say is, I feel better pressing them separately. Oh, do it, it's your okay. show. I was just thinking what you thought about it. Okay, okay, I feel like what I wanna do is press this and then I'm gonna go in and press this on top of it. Perfect. Okay. And so let's grab our little blankie over here. Yeah, beautiful. And blanket. I'm going to find, hold on a second. I gotta make, I gotta make some room over here. Keep everything like non-sticky side down. It just helps your life. Okay, so this is where I'm wanting to put it right here. And I just want to press onto a single layer. So I'm just going to yeah. grab this layer and kind of, if we go to camera one, I'm just going to kind of like open it up. I've still got my hands exactly where it's going. And actually there's like crease marks where it was folded. Okay. So let's get our little heat mat. And we're going to slide this up and under where it's going. I'm sorry if the view of this is not ideal, but I promise we will get there. So we're just pressing on one layer of the blanket. We don't need to be pressing the entire blanket. Okay, make sure these fringes are out. We want this to be flat, very flat. Okay, Love it. and just be aware of the edge of your blanket, like this bottom edge. You wanna make sure you're like putting this close to the edge, but not too close. You want it to look good, you know? Right. Okay, now. We need our R, our big R first. And what we're gonna do, oh, my press. Uh-oh. Okay, it just turned off, I think. <laughs> okay, can y'all see me if I'm right here? Okay, I'm actually gonna scoot it up just a hair. Okay, so this is the area, and I'm just going to line this up. All right. Perfect. Does that look straight to y'all? It looks straight to looks me. Looks good. Okay. Maybe just a little bit. Okay. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Now, the first 10 seconds, we're going to be pressing directly on to the HTV with our press for 10 seconds. So I'm going to adjust the time to 10 here. Perfect. So we're going to adjust it to 10, maybe. Just maybe. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this right on top of here and we're going to hit go. And I'm applying firm pressure. Okay. Do, 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 do. Allison's asking about any preheat. There was no preheat instruction? Um, no, but if you, if that's something that you like to do often before you apply yeah. HCV, you can preheat it and then put I it on there. I used to preheat all things, Allison. Like, I don't know, like... I think some people, people have a good habit some of people it. for like i don't know it seems like in general now heat transfer vinyl like people don't preheat i know i love preheating it feels like it kind of like makes sense it sets the foundation yeah, a little yeah. Bit. It, like it, it just gets it ready right, right. I love yeah it. kim I, says these two colors go together it's so good i know kathy do we need to prepare um pre-press or lint roll so if you like to lint roll feel free but remember, this would be similar to regular heat transfer vinyl. So you might be in a sublimation mindset where you lint roll, you lint roll, you lint roll. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't necessarily be the same reasonings to lint roll today. Great right. Question. 
So this is for 15 seconds with the Teflon sheet for the second press. Oh, so wonder what that Teflon sheet's doing. Why would, uh, you know what I mean? Like wonder what. Well, you know, like I know with um, puff or like brick, yeah. you don't want to overwork the substance that you're pressing. So like if you're doing right. a thicker material, you don't want to like overheat it. Yeah. Honestly, velvet, I, this velvet, I, I would guess is a synthetic material. And mm. so it could potentially melt it. Sure. That's my theory. Love um, it. I just was following the rules, but I think that's probably why. Yeah. Okay. And so you want to let it cool for at least a minute so we can... So is this a cold peel? It's like a cool... A cool peel. Like not like a warm peel, not a hot peel, a cool peel, but not yeah. cold. We just want to wait a minute. Yeah. We don't want to pull it up and we want to make sure that it's like adhered. So we don't want to start tugging at yeah. it and pulling the carrier sheet unless it's completely adhered Donna's to the asking blanket. how much pressure are we putting? Um, you know... I'm just putting my weight into it. I would just tell you how normal. much I weigh, but I won't do that. <laughs> I won't do just, that. <laughs> so, so you're just normal pressure you would use for heat transfer vinyl. Yeah, well, a little, I mean, I'm kind of like leaning into it. Yeah. So just put your body weight on top of it. Perfect. And I feel like if you have a heat press, you could probably do the same thing with a heat yeah, press. Yeah. So. Lisa, and this is a cooler peel. So we're letting it sit for a minute. Yeah, I don't, it's not like a, it's not like um, DTF when it's like completely mm -hmm, cold. Mm -hmm. um, but we just want to wait for a minute. Okay. Okay, yeah, so it's still warm, but we've waited a little bit, so we're good. And so I'm going to very carefully pull this off. Ooh, she's so pretty. Oh, my gosh, it is on so well. It is, and it looks gorgeous. Look at that, y'all. Isn't that not beautiful? Yeah, it looks set. awesome. Y'all, these would be such good Christmas gifts or, mm -hmm. like, wedding gift. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So there it is. Is that not beautiful? I'm not going to show you the finished product until we get the last yeah. one on there. But, okay, let's line this up. Now, if we didn't have to recut it, it would have been nice because we would just have to do the one yeah. press. Um, since we did press um, this already, I don't want to apply heat directly to the velvet that's exposed. Mm. So I'm going to put a Teflon sheet to cover. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm just smart. Gonna cover and for that. everyone that was worried earlier about the residue, what you were noticing and what you were worried about was the velvet remnants. And mm -hmm. what is really neat is those velvet remnants was attached to the adhesive back backer. They were not go transfer when the heat activated it because right. they had no adhesive. Yes. Um, so that's just something to be aware of when you're looking at that and reasons to be totally fine with and I thought the same I was worried the same thing when I first did it I was like oh I don't know yeah, I think that's sure. gonna stick to it but it's totally sure. fine yeah it, it totally is good yeah okay and yes, then I can just so remove good. this I just used that leftover I love that what a hack. <laughs> and then we're gonna put this on top of everything and we're gonna go in for 15 seconds again and I have not done two layers of the velvet before so we are going to see if it affects the big yeah. R right here live. I think it'll be fine. It I should, think it'll be it'll fine, be totally too. It'll be totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not we, We're worried. professionals, Alicia. It'll we're profesh. Fine. Right. <laughs> We've been around the block. Renee says, I admit I was holding my breath. <laughs> Everyone was worried Don't about it. All. I love, I love that. And the cool part is, like, you got to see what happened and you didn't risk anything, right? We, we risked it for everyone. Yes, and I didn't start the timer, so let's hope that was about 15 seconds. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit for a minute and then we will pull it off. I think this could work on cotton towels. Like if you're talking about terry cloth towels, yeah. you'd have the same problem you would with regular heat transfer vinyl, it's textured. Yeah. So if you were like actively using it, but again, if it's decorative, you should be totally fine. Yeah, for sure. Um, Ginger asks, what font would you suggest for bridesmaids robes with this velvet <sighs> gypsy with a slight offset? Because it's a kind of like a dainty handwritten font. It's a script, but I would add a very, like a 0 .05 offset onto it and then cut that offset out so it's not too thin. But yeah, that would be so pretty. I'm like, who's getting married? That yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. I need to make these for somebody. Everybody's on to their second baby. All our friends have <laughs> already got married. It's like everyone's <laughs> turning 30. Everyone's yeah. married. Okay. And then we are just going to slowly remove our carrier sheets. Yes. All right, you guys. Guys, look at this. I mean, so come beautiful. on. That is just too Bougie. good. Bougie. Let's get close. Like, are you guys kidding me? Look, it like folds with the blanket. You can't even tell. 
It's awesome. I love it. The second so sheet, we were using that Teflon sheet for the second one in order to prevent overworking the velvet or the adhesive. So, Perfect. Gypsy's my current favorite too, Tina. I use it for everything. Okay. Yay. What do you guys think? I love it.